Welcome back. All right, moving on to part two. Here is the still panel from Savara issue number two, and this is the animation that we're going to make. Uh, in the last tutorial, I cut out all the pieces, and so now we've got to make the animation itself. So we're going to open up a timeline and hit Create Video Timeline. Okay, not a frame animation. Everything opens up each layer opens up as a five second layer and I've got to slide them all out to a seven second layer because I want a seven second animation. This is a real pain. I've sped this up. Uh, but if you want your whole video and every layer to exist for seven seconds, you've got to slide it out to the end of your play area. Now I'm going to start animating the way you've seen me done in the other tutorials. But what I'm going to do different about this is I move the playhead over there to four seconds. You saw that. Now I'm converting all my layers to smart objects. That's how we're going to get the most power out of them because with the smart objects, I can make them grow and transform. I can make them spin and warp and rotate. I click the stopwatch to transform them and then I'm going to make the witch grow bigger by sliding the playhead down to what about two seconds and then I make her bigger and then I'm going to make the hand uh, spin and rotate and come on to the screen. So what I've done is I started the transformation at four seconds and then I slid back in time to about two and I build the animation in reverse. So at four seconds it's going to look exactly the way it did in the panel that Andrew and Anang drew, and then before that, stuff is going to change. That's the way I almost always do it. I hit transform, and then I go back in time, and I move things. So Alethea, I've moved back to about two seconds, and then I've transformed her. So at four, it's going to freeze exactly the way it is in the panel. Now I've got all these pieces of wood that I've got to animate. They're all in separate layers. And so the first thing I'm going to do again is I'm going to convert them all to smart objects. I'm going to do that one at a time. Just click on just one, convert it to a smart object. Click on the next one, convert it to a smart object one at a time. Make them smart objects so that I can rotate them and make them bigger. Uh, and do pretty much whatever I want with them. You've seen me done the, do this in other tutorials. And uh, just have to go through and do it one by one. Now everything's a smart object and now I can start animating by clicking on the stopwatch to start the transformation. But how do I figure out where I want the transformation to start and stop? Well I'm gonna go over to the witch and find out where that transformation started and stopped. And I'm gonna use hers as a basis as we saw in one of the earlier tutorials. Now I'm moving the slider now the playhead back in time to about three and a half seconds and putting all these pieces of wood back at three and a half. So at four seconds the scene looks the way it did in Andre Nanang's panel and then at three and a half seconds it bursts open. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want the panel to look exactly the way and then and Andre drew it at four seconds because they're the artists and I want to have their artistic vision right in the middle of this seven second clip. I don't want to start the panel uh, the way they drew it and then change it from there. I want it to have motion and then kind of freeze at four seconds. If that makes sense. So at four seconds it looks exactly the way they drew it and then the way I've got it now, it's going to stop. At four seconds, the animation completely stops. So what I'm doing is I'm going through one piece of wood at a time, going back to about three seconds, and moving each piece of wood to get it to animate. And remember, there's a button that will jump to the next animation state. And so that's how you make sure that everything happens at exactly the same time by using another layer's animation state as a reference. Now what I noticed when I was doing this animation is that there were some empty spaces when I go back to the beginning of the video. So what I did is I hit Command J and I duplicated some of these pieces of wood 
and then I'm moving them to different parts of the scene. So that one I'm moving up to the top to kind of finish the door, the top of the door, because when the witch was in a different position, you could see the background. There was an empty space, and it didn't look good. So I'm going to copy this layer. I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to reverse it. And then I'm going to animate that too, so that as soon as Alethea comes to the door, it pops out of the way. Now at four seconds, my scene looks exactly the way it does in the comic book. But this is a seven second animation. So right at four seconds, it's frozen. But now I'm going to do more animation. I move the playhead over to seven seconds, and I'm going to do more animation for the last couple seconds. Now, this time, I'm not moving the elements as far. So the first three seconds, uh, the pieces of wood moved really fast, and that means they moved really far. But the last couple seconds, I'm just moving them a little bit, and it's going to give it this slow motion effect. And the reason why I'm doing that is because at four seconds, it looks a lot like the comic book. So for the last couple seconds, I'm going to have it go in slow motion so you can sit there and appreciate the art. So I'm, I'm not trying to change Andre Anang's art. I'm trying to let you appreciate it. So I take each piece of wood and I just move it a little bit. And I'm also going to transform Alethea. I'm going to make her grow just a little bit so that she kind of moves in slow motion. It's kind of like the Matrix, where right after she bursts through the door, everything starts going in slow motion, and uh, then you can see all the little bits of wood and everything flying through the room. It's going to be really cool. In the last three seconds, I'm also going to animate the witch's hand. I have that as a separate layer. So I'm going to have it come in front of her face very slowly for those last few seconds. So we get a real uh, 3D effect there. So this is what it looks like right now. And we're almost done. But as I uh, roll it back to the beginning, I'm noticing some problems that I've got to fix. So let's go and clean that up real quick so that it looks good. So the first problem that I saw is that when I go back to the beginning, there's no door, so there's no sunlight coming through the door. And then when Alethea bursts through, the sunlight opens up. And it just, it doesn't look right when the door is closed, but there's still, like, a shadow on the witch's shoulders and the arms. And at the same time, there's no light coming through the door when the door bursts open. So I'm going to correct that by making a disk of sunlight. So I just found the color that the artists use, and I'm making a disk with the uh, circular marquee tool. I'm putting that behind the witch. I'm going to slide it into the timeline there. And then if I wanted to get bigger, as always, I've got to convert to Smart Object, so that way I can transform it and make it grow as the door bursts open. I'm also going to uh, add a little bit of special effects to this disk that I made. I'm going to add an outer glow to it. And also, it's a little bit too sharp, so I'm going to have to blur it a little bit. Now, it's already a smart object, and I noticed that I need to make some changes to it. So what I need to do is I need to double-click on the smart object, and that opens it up, and then I can add a blur to it. I'm going to make it so it's not so sharp. And then I hit Command-S to save, Command-W to close, and now that's what it looks like. I've got this transforming, glowing ball of light that... Uh, that shows up when Alethea bursts through the door. Makes it look more like the artist intended it. See, there's the door closed. Doesn't look quite right. Now, there's something else that's wrong with this. I'm going to open up the witch's 
smart object and I'm going to cut away this hole right here, the sunlight and then hit command S to save, command W to close and now you can see Alethea coming through so I kind of cut away her shoulder a little bit but it, it's needed for the effect. I need to close the door a little bit too so what I did is I hit command J and I doubled up that piece of wood and then I'm going to animate it so that it swings out of the way because I want the door closed at the beginning of the animation. And now the last problem. Look at the animation. The witch has color on her even when the door is closed, when it should be dark. So I'm going to make an adjustment layer and I'm going to link it to the witch. You see how I linked it right there? And now I can change the opacity of this adjustment layer. So I'm going to make the witch darker by changing this curves layer or hue saturation or levels or whatever you, tool you want to use and then because I can animate even this layer this adjustment layer I can animate the opacity of the adjustment layer so just like any other layer I hit the stopwatch for opacity that creates a state and then I'm gonna move the uh, playhead over and then I'm going to change the opacity and I'm going to time that so that it lines up with the door bursting open so that when the door is closed she's dark and when the door is open the adjustment layer is going to disappear opacity is zero and it's going to get bright look how I did that so we are all done so let's look at the original panel. This is what my artist drew. Here's the animation without any sort of cropping. This is just the raw animation, 6.8 seconds. Here's the same animation cropped. And then you can also do a close-up of the face. So that's it. We're done. You've learned all of my tricks. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you join me next time. Thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it.